Hey there everybody, welcome back to the Chem Complete channel and in today's lecture we are going to be taking a look at acid and base chemistry and more specifically we want to start our lecture series on acids and bases by going over and defining what an acid or a base is because there are multiple ways that we can define or talk about an acid or a base chemically speaking. So that is what we are going to be focused on coming up right now. All right, thank you for joining me today for your learning needs. And a quick shout out, head on over to chemcomplete.com when you finish this video because chemcomplete.com has lots of free resources. All you have to do is sign up and I promise you'll never get any sort of spam mail and you will have access to free resources as well as the option to purchase some very affordable guides to help support the channel that will help you walk through more difficult concepts. All right, so let's get started. Acid and bases. How do we define acids and bases in chemistry? Well, there's three major definitions. The Arrhenius definition of an acid or base, the Bronsted-Lowry definition, and then finally the Lewis definition. So we're going to take a look at each of these, and then we're going to, at the end, in case it's not obvious, discuss which one is really the strictest definition and then which one is the broadest definition, meaning it captures the most compounds that could potentially be classified as acids or bases. Okay, so to start out, we're going to take a look at the Arrhenius definition. And the Arrhenius definition states that an acid is going to be anything that can produce or release. Okay, and so when we use those terms, they're kind of used interchangeably here. Okay, can produce or uh, release or generate, okay, any of those terms. And it can produce, release, or generate H plus in, and this is important, aqueous solution. Okay, so in other words, if I have a water solution and I take a compound and I drop it into that water solution, can that compound produce or give off H plus? And if it can, by the Arrhenius definition, it would be considered an acid. So keep in mind that when we talk about H plus, many times you're going to hear instructors talking about this, or chemists in general, as proton. Okay, and this is deriving from the same subatomic particle that we discuss in class. And that's because if you take a look at a normal H or hydrogen, right, it would have one proton and it would have one electron associated with it. So plus means the removal of an electron. If there's no neutrons, all you have left is a proton. OK, so the uh, H plus definition, when you hear it called proton, that's why it's referring to it as a proton, because it is literally just that one proton in a nucleus. Okay, now for a base, by the Arrhenius definition, a base can produce or generate a hydroxide ion in aqueous solution. So the hydroxide ion is the OH minus ion, and that is most typically associated with the base sodium hydroxide, although there are certainly lots of different compounds that can generate hydroxide, not just sodium hydroxide, but just like there are certain acids that are kind of stereotypical, like HCl, right? Most people know hydrochloric acid or H2SO4. Most people know sulfuric acid, uh, but not as many people know, for instance, perchloric acid, which would be HClO4. So these are the definitions here. We've got the ability to produce H plus in aqueous solution. That's an acid and can produce or generate an OH minus in aqueous solution. And that would be a base. So now we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at the Bronsted-Lowry definition. So there are some similarities between Arrhenius and Bronsted-Lowry, but there are also some differences here. Okay, so the acid is very close to what the Arrhenius definition was. And here we're going to say that an acid 
is anything donating okay you're giving away a proton in solution okay and a lot of times you may see this written also as in a reaction okay but basically one of the things that's been removed here is the requirement for water right it doesn't necessarily have to be an aqueous solution it's anything that can donate an h plus when it's in any solution it could be some sort of organic solvent or something like that okay now a base this is where we see a bit of a bigger change here and we start to deviate from the hydroxide definition that we saw above a base is going to be anything that can accept Okay, so anything accepting H plus in solution. And again, you could also state in a reaction. Okay, so when we take a look at that, now it doesn't, the base is no longer revolving around the generation of hydroxide. It is focused on its ability, this compound's ability to accept a proton in solution right so that is very different as far as the definition is concerned and then we get to the lewis definition so the lewis definition is now going to kind of really turn things around and challenge the other two as far as the way that they were stating it now they still uh how do i say this they still support one another right so these all kind of agree with one another but again there are certain ones that are more narrow or specific and then others that are larger in scope in their definition. Okay, now, the Lewis definition is for an acid, okay, any compound uh, that can accept electrons. Okay, so... You got to be careful when you're working with the Lewis definition at first, because if you're used to the Bronsted-Lowry, and most students do use Bronsted-Lowry throughout most of general chemistry, so general inorganic chemistry, and then Lewis comes much more into play in organic chemistry. When you're taking organic chemistry, Lewis is like front and center. Lewis structures, you're doing lots of, you know, nucleophiles and electrons that are moving around during mechanisms. So you have to almost view everything as electrons in organic chemistry. So if you take a look here, right, in Bronsted-Lowry, it says anything donating an H plus in solution, whereas here it's any compound that can accept electrons. Well, electrons are the opposite of the protons from a charge perspective. So it would make sense that if the acid is doing one thing, with protons, then it's probably doing the opposite with electrons, right? If it's donating protons, then it's probably able to accept electrons because by donating those protons, right, if we're talking about H+, it's something that might need electrons. So that's the definition for an acid by Lewis. And then it's going to be similar as far as a flip here, but it's still going to be focused on electrons. A base will be any compound that can donate electrons. And again, that becomes very important when you're talking about organic chemistry, uh, especially, you know, for those of you that may take organic chemistry or are currently in it, and you are doing mechanisms where you have to move electrons around and show the flow of electrons in a reaction. Okay. Now, as far as which is going to be the strict definition versus which one would be broad the strictest definition by far is the Arrhenius definition okay and this one is so strict because it is stating that only a specific thing in each case has to be generated there it doesn't talk about any sort of acceptance of the same material from the opposite partner meaning the acid or the base Okay, and also it has to be an aqueous solution. So we're only really considering water-based solutions when we start talking about the scope of acids and bases with Arrhenius. And that can be very limiting um, when you don't have water around, right? So then you get to the Bronsted-Lowry. This has expanded it a lot because now we throw away the need for water 
And we also have, now that's not to say you can't have water, but we also have redefined a base as anything accepting what the acid gave off. Instead of saying, okay, a base has to generate its own thing that we call a hydroxide ion. So the Bronsted-Lowry right here is not super strict, but we would call it sort of mid-level as far as its scope and what it captures. Okay, and that means the broadest or the greatest definition, which we would have right here, this one's going to be very broad, is the Lewis definition. And that's because any compound can really be viewed through the scope of electrons, right? So not all compounds have H+. And so if you have a compound, let's say something like carbon dioxide, it doesn't have any hydrogens associated with it. So it's not really going to be able to give off H plus in solution if it doesn't have any hydrogens to begin with. However, it does have electrons and it may donate some electrons or it may accept some electrons in the course of a reaction. And as long as it has electrons and can either accept or donate, then you are in business for calling it an acid or a base. And so the Lewis definition is the broadest definition. It gives us the most scope. Technically, under the Lewis definition, any chemical compound could be classified as an acid or as a base. But you have to kind of look at it contextually, right? So you have to see the environment that it's in, what's going on, is it currently acting as an acid or base? Now, some will be much more clean cut than others, uh, but that's a topic for a different time that gets further into organic chemistry. So that is it. I want to wrap it up there. You've got three definitions, Arrhenius, which is the strictest, the Bronsted-Lowry, which is mid-level. It's usually the starting point for most students when they get into general chemistry. And then you've got the Lewis definition, which is the broadest definition. That one really comes into scope during organic chemistry. So that is it. One more reminder, head on over to chemcomplete.com for your needs. You can always give us support through subscribing to the channel, hitting the thanks button and making a small donation, whatever works for you. Just keep on watching and I am so thankful that you have chosen Chem Complete for your chemistry learning and your chemistry needs. I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.